Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Welcome, everyone, to another amazing episode of Mission Matters, Becoming a Podcasting Pro. This is our weekly ongoing series every Thursday that we put together. Our goal is to amplify the mission and purpose of other entrepreneurs, executives, business owners, to educate and inspire future generations, or any other executives or entrepreneurs who are in the trenches, essentially learning from their peers that are doing this, doing the hard work now. And so with this, today's topic is going to be focused on becoming a podcasting pro. We've been able to record well over 3,500 podcast episodes, and we have many clients where we develop a lot of their podcasts as well. We, on average, I think at one point, we're releasing up to 20 episodes per day. And for our own platform, we're averaging anywhere from five to 10 a day. We have a lot of content that's coming out on a daily basis through Mission Matters. And then if you count all of our clients, well, then it's a lot more than that. And Adam fruitfully is uh, the brains behind a lot of that operation and building out the backend processes and uh, making sure that all of our clients and everyone that we work with are very happy with the way that it turns out. And so with that, we've got an amazing slew of talking points that we're going to go over. But with this, I'll turn it over to Adam and then we can have all of our guests maybe introduce themselves as well. So pass it off to you, Adam. So let's start with uh, Elizabeth, please. Okay, well, good evening. Thank you. I am Elizabeth Yo. I'm a United States Navy vet, and I am also the CEO and founder of Veteran Charities Initiative, where I am helping organizations realize the benefit of having women veterans in the ranks of their organizations. Awesome. And Dr. Troy, please. Hey, thank you so much. Great to be here. So I'm Dr. Troy Hall. I work out of uh, Charleston, South Carolina, where even when it rains, the sun still shines. So I provide uh, consulting and co- executive coaching services all around best-selling title, cohesion culture, proven principles to retain your top talent. And I am also the mastermind behind Cohesion Culture Camp, which is an online leadership development program, five modules, five weeks, intense work. And that's course one of a three course program. Awesome. Kamar, please. Hi guys, I'm Kamar. I'm Adam's uh, Swiss Army knife when it comes to PR. I run a small PR platform called Kiss PR. And I help small businesses amplify their content through press release distribution. Fantastic. So today's topic, becoming a podcasting pro. So uh, I guess I'll start with just a a quick little story about, I think it's funny that in the pre-show, so now we're recording, but we weren't um, when we were having this conversation. So for everyone listening, we were talking about how Chirag made us come on the, come on the clubhouse and made us, you know, go on the platform, even though myself and Elizabeth were kind of like, "Eh, another platform, another app, but Chirag was right. Well, the podcast is pretty similar. The reason why we originally started started the podcast was uh, we wanted to sell more books. We published a lot of authors. So at this point today, we've published over 140 authors. And I think at the time of the podcast being created, maybe we'd only published maybe like 20 or something like that. It might have been 20 or 30, something like that. And the original idea was start a podcast and start talking about, you know, the books. And the idea was to put an ad in the beginning of the podcast episode and really just to drive traffic and just sell more books. So that was our original thought process behind doing the podcast and it really just grew from there so first off again I said no Shrag, I don't want to do a podcast too we're doing all this other stuff already are you kidding me and the, the thing about podcasting was is almost like clubhouses that I just found that the the content itself like it was the lowest 
barrier of entry for great content. Like it was the best way to collaborate with somebody to create a new piece of content, to create something that was interesting without having to take quite as much time as it takes to do other forms of content. Like, so video, video can be hard. Even video interviews can be really hard. You can even think about a blog or a blog post or something like that, what it really takes to write a good blog post versus a podcast where you can really, you know, technology is easy enough, whether you're doing it on Zoom or a phone call recording app or something like that. Like it just made it so much easier to connect with people and to, and to create new content that was relevant, that was timely. And also just didn't take, you know, we're all business owners, everybody on this call, I see um, that just didn't take you away too far from your business. And it still allowed you to, to get things out there and to get a message out there. So that that's our story and kind of how we came about the whole podcasting niche. And I have some more reasons behind why I think podcasts or launching podcasts makes sense um, for people, but I don't, I don't want this to be a keynote, but this isn't a webinar or anything like that. So I want to get some other people involved. So what interests like other people on the line about podcasting just in general, or what even interests you to the topic? I can explain or at least chime in on this. So if you recall, you contacted me through LinkedIn and uh, things that we want to give is everybody wants to become an influencer and to become an influencer one has to be interviewed by somebody who has you know significant influence in that subject matter and i was starting at that time and i wanted to you know have some brand halo uh, so i kind of contacted you know said yeah we did a podcast and i got some awareness and eyeballs so that was the best way one can do you know two or three podcasts and these podcasts rank very well in YouTube. So I started to get, you know, contact by Forbes and everybody else that was trying to sell to me. So that was uh, really good. Well, for me, I really wanted to start having, just like you said, just an easy way um, to have content. And people, I think, are, are much more relaxed in this type of an environment where they can just speak freely, uh, candidly, and, and the content is naturally created. And so for me, I like to bring in the audience. I like the panel lineup. I like having people involved in the conversation. And so for me, that is the number one reason I really want to focus on this type of platform so that I can have access easily with others and throughout the community. For me, so I'm actually a, what I call a podcasting pro guest. So I like to guest on podcasts. I think that's a pretty deep little cool strategy, but I wanted to just really make sure that I wasn't missing an opportunity because I know that part of the podcasting arena, and Adam, I know what I recognize for you is that you become an authority within that space. And so individuals turn and look to you. And of course, you increase your network as a result of doing the podcast and, you know, getting the right people to do that. So for me, I just wanted to kind of learn a little bit more about it and make sure that I wasn't missing something, discussing whether that strategy would work for me in the way I'm building my brand and my authority. I love what the doctor just said. And on the flip side, that is exactly why I want to have the platform, because I think it's a great opening line. It's an easy way in to talk to any and everyone at any level to invite them on to be that trusted advisor, that professional, that per, that expert. So I think well, it works on both sides. So I'm so glad that you shared that. Thank you. I want to I want to stay on that subject a little longer, actually, Dr. Troy. So when I think podcasting pro, I think both sides. I don't mean just being a podcaster. I do mean guest. Then maybe give us a little bit more insight into how you were able to to build that or to go down that path. Because I, I I'd like to learn. Well, for me, I took a what I did is I looked at it from a strategic objective, and I had an opportunity to say. If I were to create the podcasting process, what I would have to go through to do that and the time and energy it would take. However, if I solicited myself as a guest because I have an established brand and an established authority that somebody might want. And again, when I say this, I don't mean to make myself sound like, oh, I'm awesome or, or great. Well, it's all right. You're, I said you're awesome. You're awesome. Go ahead. All right. Well, I mean, you know, so I have, con I have confidence in what I know that I can do. And so therefore, and I know I have a story to tell. I know that I have something that will be of value that I'm not just going to create. Uh, dead airtime. So 
I thought that I would guess because the value is I have done 12 podcasts so far this year and we're into March of where the anticipated audience is over a hundred thousand listeners. I could not develop 12 podcast stories in the next, in these last 90 days to reach a hundred thousand people. So it was a short term solution for me to be able to really move into that with limited resources, with being able to manage my consulting and executive coaching business that I already have. So that's why I chose to do it. And it's just a matter of putting yourself out there. I mean, individuals who run podcasts, and Adam, you probably know this, well, you may have people knocking down your door to want to be on your podcast because of what you built your reputation. But for a lot of individuals, it's still important for them to be, you know, they're still looking for guests and, you know, works out really great. So that's kind of what it is for me. Any tips on how to reach out to, to podcasters? Uh, I'll chime in on that too and give my opinion on it, but because uh, obviously we get quite a few reach outs, but any, uh, any tips for anybody listening that, uh, that want to go down that route, like on how they did it? Because the way I see it is like everybody has their own you know, specialty. Yours is one particular thing, but there's different niches for podcasts. So there's a lot of different routes you can go, but I'm interested to hear what, what made you successful in your strategy. Well, I chose a social media partner. And that social media partner offered that, that service. And so for, the, again, the small amount of money each month for them to pitch and present me. And that's the other thing, too, for if you want to be a podcast guest on another one, you act, actually there's more credibility with you getting into the guest role if someone else is representing you than sometimes that you're just representing yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you can't, but I think there's a certain level of that that says somebody else is reaching out on my behalf and it kind of makes you feel like your business and entity has more people involved with it and so it's a more serious kind of thing i don't hopefully i'm not over analyzing it but that's again that was my thought thinking that went behind it i'm interested in hearing if somebody else might feel the same way or or feel something different but that's how it's worked and so that organization has been able to successfully pitch now i will say i have some things going for me and i will just i want to i'll say this when i was mr hall i had people who listened to me but when i'm dr hall i have people who want me so there's a very difference in the way that comes across i've also authored not only with mission matters but i've I've authored separately. I have a best-selling title. I'm releasing a third book. All of those things create synergy around your brand and around your voice and around your topic and conversation that can create some interest into it. I like to think that I'm a knight. I also like to think that if I'm on it, I have a personality, you know, so you want to listen, you know, you want to, you know, we have fun back and forth at it. You know, we joke back and forth. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it becomes interesting and people are just listening to a person drone on about something, but they maybe tell stories and they have some interactions back and forth. And I always like to say to the to the host, I'm a sound bite waiting to happen. So the, you never know what I'm going to say, but it'll it'll build us a lot of fun and energy with it. So I've taken a lot of time here. I apologize, but that's, that's no. I, I ask follow up questions. I want to hear it because valuable information. Like I said, I've never been a. I've never really guessed it. I mean, I guessed, but I've never had a like solid strategy to reach out to other um to other people to do it. So I think it's very valuable. Thank you. More of a follow up, and I guess this is more for Kamar and Katie because you know Kamar being in the PR role, Katie being more of the social media strategist. I take it they probably, or my assumption is, you know, they probably get a lot of clients that they're putting on podcasts or or at least other outlets, right? Maybe not podcasts directly, but it could be getting social media influencer opportunities, collaborations of that nature. I think Dr. Hall, that's that's to your point, right? When you're talking about like getting outside representation and support, it would be, are you talking about someone like a Kamar who's in PR or Katie who's in the social media world and you know they're representing yes. individuals or companies? Yes, it's just like a speaker. I have a speaker's bureau that actually uh, you know, finds me opportunities to speak. So when I speak internationally or speak nationally, and of course, now that we're moving, you know, maybe closer to being more in person again, some of those opportunities will increase. But 
that's why you have a professional speakers bureau to represent you. There's something more legitimate sometimes than that third party. And so, and I've used the speakers bureau for a number of years. So it just became like a natural idea for me to say, oh, well, why wouldn't I use a social media expert to pitch me for podcasts, much like the way I do the speakers bureau for speaking. It's awesome. And uh, maybe let's have just a, a quick quick note. Katie, if you want to introduce yourself. Hey guys, how are you? I'm, I'm double dipping here. I'm cooking dinner and I figured I would jump in. Hey, <laughs> what's for happy. dinner? No. <laughs> We've got some turkey meatball sandwiches and leftover <laughs> veggies. Yeah. Quick and easy. So I'm Katie. I'm a social media strategist and business coach for mom entrepreneurs. My background is in social media, but also I did a lot of digital PR. I was pitching blogs for infographic placements, you know, a good half a decade ago. So I guess if I were to give like a little secret insider piece of advice, I mean, it's like, you can totally pitch yourself. You could create, you know, if you, if you don't have the budget to have a service to pitch for you, but you want the pitch to be coming from someone else, you can create your own admin. I mean, there's no, there's no shame in that game, you know, pitching Katie Malone, you know, it could be my admin or something like that. Right. But being unique and authentic in the follow-up right now with Instagram, you can really get in someone's DMs that, that host a podcast, send them a video message with your face, use their name, compliment them. So, you know, I don't have a doctor in front of my name, but if I can show up with a video and using your name and referencing one of your last episodes and really making connection, you can put yourself miles ahead of people who are just sending that templated email pitch. So it's all about being creative. Awesome. Great advice. Martin, are you there? I definitely want to make sure we get all our speakers in there. That's oh, all. Absolutely. I'm Martin Ravinsky, CEO at Boards Eye, or some people say Board C, and also a co-author in, with Adam's book. And we did start a podcast ourselves. We're lucky enough to have a pool of people that we can simply send out a questionnaire whether they want to get involved in it. And they're all executives. A lot of them obviously love to speak. And the problem with us is, and we're actually just in the midst of finding the right person to continue this. As you know, with a podcast, you need to have a continuous flow and finding people wasn't a problem for us. Finding time and somebody dedicated to running the podcast was the only issue. So for me, hearing what, what you guys are bringing to the table is actually something new. And I'm thinking about it from the reverse of, you know, how do I get more podcasts? And th that's actually something that I'm, I'm really interested in too, but just because of PR work, obviously. So, but that's, that's my, our case is we do have a big pool of people that would love to be interviewed or have that opportunity to get some PR going. I'm not sure if that's helpful. It's very helpful, Martin. And, and, and just throwing this out there, I think you didn't catch this at the beginning, but if you see a little logo on the top, Mission Matters Club, we have our own club now that Chirag set up for this. And Chirag, I, just, and you, I want just, you two, I want you and Chirag to get together. And I don't think we have this on the content calendar already, but we need like a benefits of having a board for your business or something. Like I want to do a, definitely do a, yeah, are you there, Chirag? Oh yeah, of course. Right? Write that one down because we want Martin to lead that one and to really get in depth into like what the benefits are of creating a board and like what that looks like because we're in the middle of that right now, Martin. So that I guess that's my own plug on another on another piece of content <laughs> for us going forward. So I'm like, come on, sure, I'll get it done. So, so we, back to podcasting. Wait, um, wait, uh, real okay, quick. Okay. We uh, Christine just joined us recently too. Oh, and I didn't see that. I'm sorry, Christine. <laughs> I didn't see it. It popped up. I was looking away from the phone. Uh, Christine, can you please uh, introduce yourself? Christine? There we go. <laughs> sorry, guys. This is my first time on Clubhouse. It's nice to meet everyone. I'm the founder and CEO of Galavan, a luxury travel company. And you have your own podcast and you guys do a lot of video content as well. So you're very much we in the do. industry. Yes, um, we have our own podcast that's not quite consistent. That's one of the things that we really want to work on is getting more consistency because I think that's super important. And then we've done our own videos on our own platform and also on YouTube. And we just got a pickup for our travel show on PBS. So we're working on all the logistics to lock that together. Wow, that is exciting. So let's, I mean, okay, so we have a couple of podcasters on here. I think Martin said he had one. Christine had one. A couple other people, I think, that have them. As a podcast, like what have been some of your tips or some of the things that have that have worked out for you in developing your content? Again, very open-ended. I'm throwing that on the, on the table for anybody that wants to chime in. 
So I don't have a podcast, but I have a segment on a radio show. And so for me, creating the content is basically having it be topic driven. And that's what's worked for me so that I can invite guests who specialize in whatever particular topic it is for that week, no matter the genre of, you know, folk business, focus it is, or product, whatever it might be. So for me, on my segment, it's focused on veterans. And so within that space, I just pick different topics in that community with that demographic, and then start to search out and invite people from LinkedIn, from Facebook, from Instagram, and follow and just start kind of making a connection like you all said in in the beginning, in Messenger and and inviting them to have, immediately inviting them to have conversations face-to-face, so on a Zoom or on a FaceTime or whatever it is, and not electronically or on paper, because that seems to work best and establish uh, the report the fastest. Uh, These are the other podcasters out here. Tips for podcasters. So an SEO hack or a tip for podcasters is that a lot of podcasters don't know this because their goal is to podcast. But if you take your podcast and you get an embed, then you embed that podcast into your website or a blog. And then you also share it on social media with where the embeds are allowed. You're going to get organic link juice coming from different sites. That's going to help your brand authority and will help your podcast rank better and people be able to find it. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's one of the big things that Drew Durag and I, to just the podcasting platform also in general, is that like, the, I don't know another piece of content where you put out an episode and it gets picked up by major platforms like Apple or Spotify or all these other things, but the aggregators out there, so we use our, our platform of choice is Buzzsprout, but there's Lisbon, I mean, there's a bunch of other platforms out there that do the distribution or the aggregation for you for just even just getting on the different platforms, and we found that, you know, one piece of content can really stretch a long way and then if you multiply that by also sharing on all your different at least the top five um, social media platforms at the least LinkedIn is our biggest one for for traffic overall I mean it's just it's just been a huge it's been a game changer for us in terms of traffic and the way we've been able to build the brand is, is really just putting in that work there and anybody else like tips on like social media or how they shared their content or just different ways video versus audio both I mean what's been everybody else else's experience i'm curious if anyone is utilizing youtube i don't know if you if you mentioned that but i do do this for some of my clients so a podcast repurposing to youtube with if there's no video content just a static image just as another outlet to get seen really for brand awareness or pickup but I was wondering if that's a widespread tactic. I could chime in. We do that. So the beauty of, especially like if you're doing video content, the beauty of video content is that it's really easy to extract the audio content. And then hence now you have audio, right? So now you could post that on all the podcast publishing platforms. And then uh, you could transcribe that uh, recording into an article. So now you have like a blog post. So we do that on all of our outlets. We are very omnichannel. I think we post on pretty much every platform from uh, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our website. So that's articles for our content on the website for SEO. And then we also post on, I think what Adam is it like close to 15 different podcasting platforms from Spotify, Google podcasts, Apple podcasts. I think it's all in all almost 17 platforms that we post on, but it's just one content piece that we're, uh, that we're recording. And uh, the beauty is, is on every platform, what we're starting to do now, just because we're posting almost, I think five to 10 times per day. So it's a lot of content and then not to mention all of our clients. So we have about a six person team that literally is just full-time dedicated to this posting every day. And then now we're even optimizing the content for YouTube specifically, but it's just like the whole supply chain. It just, it, it, it's a lot of work, but it's, it is picking up in short. I like the YouTube thing and the YouTube thing is really, I guess, just boosted our searchability because sometimes you've got a new episode and even for like, even like when we launch a new podcast for, for somebody like you can see it immediately, like for whatever reason on the images and maybe Kamar can chime in on this one better than I can. I'm not claiming to be a YouTube expert. I know that's Kamar's wheelhouse, but I do know that even when you're starting a new podcast in terms of ranking and getting things going, no other piece of content have I seen to where you can 
you just put it out there. And I think it has to just do with all the platforms that pick it up. Because even like under images, I know we launched a, a value-based care. It was a healthcare podcast for a client. And after her first episode, we went and we put value-based care and just kind of did some Google searches. And it was and, and actually ranked and came up under at least the images section. And that was only after an episode. Maybe it was two episodes, something like that. And it was because it was the freshest content that came out. So, and, and it was her YouTube, by the way, Katie, that came up specifically. So I don't, again, I'm not claiming I know the back end of how that works, but I definitely always recommend like repurposing and putting it on YouTube when possible. Uh, Katie, I want to I wanted to ask you a question. So I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't a lot, I haven't put a lot of emphasis into promoting it simply because I have so many other things that are going. And so right now I traditionally release any of the podcast, you know, guest spots that I'm on through my traditional Facebook and LinkedIn. Would you, would you suggest then, like, what would you suggest that I do in my channel? Create a special playlist, put it all there, then also use that YouTube link whenever I'm promoting it through the other channels so people have a, a variety of options. What, what do you recommend I do? I guess I would look at overall goal. As long as the people listening to the other content that you're putting out on your channel would be interested in the podcast content, which I, I would assume they would. I yeah. think a playlist for that, that would be great. But the beauty of YouTube is that it's really a search engine and less of a social media platform. So if people are searching for content, your content, your podcast content related to, you know, the answer to their question or the topic they're searching will come up. As far as putting that link out on the rest of the internet on different socials, that'd be a matter of like, where do you want to drive people first? So discovery wise, when they find yeah. you, do you want to send them to YouTube or do you want to send them to your website or their Perfect. where it's embedded? Perfect. Right? That's great. Great advice. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I was going to add the thing about uh, YouTube is it stays forever. Whereas if you post on any of the podcasting platforms or even on the uh, like Facebook or LinkedIn, you pretty much get sucked into the algorithm and the half-life of each of the posts is like you're talking days. You know, when you're looking at Twitter, you're talking pretty much like hours or minutes because then it just gets scrolled down and then you can't really find that content in the future. Whereas when you post on YouTube because it's owned by Google, the searchability is just there. So like we've had videos and I, I think Adam, cause I know he looks at the data a lot more than I do, but we've had videos that we posted from even like a year or two ago that are starting to like pick up steam randomly just because maybe that content piece is being searched now. And it's just, it's just more relatable or there's a, maybe for whatever reason it's going viral because, because it's just more relevant for the time being it's being discussed now. So that's the beauty of YouTube is just, there's, you get that searchability from Google where the half-life, there really is no half-life. Like it could be relevant and you could have a post go viral even many years later, which I've seen happen many times over. Awesome. Awesome advice. Hey guys. Thanks, Katie. Kamar, any comments on this Google stuff? We've been having all these Google conversations. I feel like that's your that's your wheelhouse. You're the most experienced one on here in here on that one. It is. So and and this is mostly what SEOs do is they complicate things, but you have to think what Google wants, and Google wants best user experience. So like you were saying, if you write blog and you post it on your blog, uh, it may months before your blog can write. But if you take the same blog and somehow turn into a video or a podcast and put it on YouTube, it will rank in 10 minutes. Why is it that? Because Google wants to always provide better content to its user. And like Katie said, that is a search engine. So Google will always crawl its own content faster. And then if you put a link from that video to your blog, then your blog becomes an educational piece. And then your video becomes an amplifier. So you are amplifying from the video going to the blog. And then because the blog is on your money site, it starts to create transactions for you because people are not going to convert on YouTube and they should because the purpose of the YouTube is to educate them and make them motivated enough so they can come to your transactional content. Mm -hmm. So right in the description and before you talk about the video, it's, hey, if you like this, subscribe, but definitely put a link below mm -hmm. and if you want to learn more. So the moment they go to your piece where the transaction happened, or the lead page or whatever that is, then they trans, uh, convert. And that's what we do for a lot of clients, where we tell them to 
content, whether it's Zoom video or podcast, and then put it on YouTube, and then their transition goes phenomenally higher, not only from a search perspective, but people are willing to buy the product or connect with them. So that's the best organic system one can use for pennies uh, rather than spending a lot of money on SEO. That's uh, so great advice. And we do, I mean, we obviously do that. Our main way of promoting is essentially been through our website and then embedding the YouTube video. People find the, the YouTube video and the embed, they follow it to the channel, they hit subscribe. So that's been our main way of driving traffic to those channels. And it's just another route. Like I, I always tell people, like, if you, if you have the content, you should definitely repurpose it. Let's talk a little bit about niches, like in different niches. So Christine, if you're, if you're still there, I'm just curious about like how you've gone about growing your niche and, and travel and what you're doing um, with your brand i mean it'd be good to hear another another perspective you know it's interesting because we have been around for nine years going on 10 years of business this year and congratulations by the way congrats that's not thank easy you. no oh, by the way this is this is your first time so hold on i'm sorry it's it's basically in short what Adam's saying is that when you keep muting and unmuting your microphone and do it really fast, that's the equivalent of clapping in Clubhouse, just so you're aware. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Adam. Well, for us, it's really been about a word of mouth. Like, you know, we, we provide a service for our clients. We're a resource for travel where you can do everything from learn about where you want to go to be inspired to be about where you want to go all the way to like booking from start to finish so you know how we've really gained traction we have no traction on our podcast which is one of the reasons why i wanted to come on right now just to hear what people are doing for best practices but what we've consistently done in our business is we've just created great content we've created interesting like we've done interesting interviews with people we've created great content we have we're subject matter experts in the travel space and there's always unlimited things to talk about in travel and you know for us like we have the content and we have the we have like the the guests that that we can do have on our podcast but what we just don't have is they don't have consistency which is something we need to work on for our podcast now and then we also just don't have like all the back-end stuff that we need to to do to really get our you know to get our podcast to just be heard more got it martin what's been martin let's talk about your your niche and what your podcast is about i just want to make sure that uh, we get everybody's show in here by the way congrats on getting the clubhouse pretty easy since we work with executives our goal is to bring them on to a podcast and basically go over their expertise and how they can help on the board and what they can bring to a company uh, as an executive. So it's, it's basically an opportunity for them to shine and just talk about their experience and expertise. And, you know, if they have any board certification, I'll talk about that as well. So that's, that's kind of a concept. And sometimes we come across somebody that just has a very uh, specific niche and they'll go into a little bit more detail on that as well. But it's always executive driven. I get it. What has been your experience in trying to like and trying to promote and grow the podcast? So your 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 niche is pretty similar to ours. So different executives. In your case, it's yeah. more specific to boards. Like in terms of growing your audience and sharing, like what kind of things have you done to maybe to work towards that? Pretty much nothing and uh, nothing different than you guys talked about. We we did utilize YouTube and we did do a usually we would get a uh, picture and it'd just be a picture of uh, the person that we're interviewing that that seemed to work pretty good we are completely revamping our website which will make it easier to add those podcasts to the site blog fashion obviously but other than that no just trying to basically take it from one podcast and get it you know spread over to as many podcast services as we can I, I don't think we i'm actually learning some as i'm listening to you guys but you know we're or i wouldn't say we're a super expert in seo i was 10 years ago but that's a whole different game these days so i mean i, I love to learn and listen to you guys but so far uh, it seems like we've been doing pretty much the same things i don't think we found anything beyond what you guys talked about so far mm. Has anybody done anything with like with like pay ads or boosting posts or anything towards podcasting? I think Sharag and I agreed that next month we're gonna we'll start down that path of just ex really just exploring what that looks like to drive traffic I, through some other things. Has anybody done that? Anything around those? I, I actually do that for the clients, and I'll actually give you a hack there when you guys are doing it. So 
a lot of people what they do is they create a podcast or and put it on youtube or on facebook and what happens is that it, the cost is too high so mm. there's a technique to doing that and when you're ready to do it i'll show you the technique it's kind of i have to show you but if you adapt to that technique you will be paying you know pennies rather than dollars you know and then once you have built that technique and it's all legit in facebook then you can target to the right people so when you're ready to do it i will teach you that oh that's exciting yeah cuz we've been thinking about just different ways cuz there's some i think it's like i don't know if this off the top of my head i think it's called podbean or there's some other like other like platforms that you can actually advertise on that are direct like native in their app and they guarantee a certain amount of like legit clicks and you're in front of the right audiences and things to where you can buy different niches so there's a couple of platforms out there that are pretty big and they have um they have really niched down audiences so we'll be this won't be our last becoming a podcast pro episode put it that way and we'll definitely we'll definitely update you on as we start testing these things like the whole point of this club by the way is to exchange best practices and to all grow together so we'll we'll definitely be reporting back on that side of things hello welcome hello how are you oh man so good to see you here if you yeah. introduce yourself to everyone yeah of course yeah i was texting shirag i was waiting to to join because i'm driving around los angeles to do something uh, the, for somebody so my name is manuele and as you hear from my accent uh, born and raised in chicago and then moved to los angeles a few years ago <laughs> so i'm italian uh, and i own uh, a company in the uh, food industry in real estate in los angeles and i'm uh, since a year uh, we design let's say beautiful luxury home uh, multi family and uh, some commercial as well I'm very happy for you guys for Adam and Sirag so for all of these achievements that you are doing so it's amazing and actually I want to spend a couple words on Adam for how amazing came out my book so thank you Adam because it's beautiful and anybody is reading the book is telling me that they recognize me from that book and they understand uh, why everything that they know about me happened in my life <laughs> so yeah that's amazing and uh, i'm very interesting on uh, listening all of you guys because you know and you are talking about uh, something that i'm not uh, pretty familiar with uh, so i'm not uh, strong as uh, in other things in a business so i'm uh, listening uh, omar i was listening to christine before and i mean of course you and sirag uh, so i'm super curious to continue to listen to you guys and and share some good insights so i don't and as a podcast I will be very happy to participate uh, in uh, some of your podcast uh, and be uh, a guest as I've done in uh, several other occasions and uh, good luck for Kumar I don't know if it's the right pronunciation of your name uh, so if uh, the uh, penny payment for the ads uh, is only for podcast uh, or also for business like I mean when uh, you are advertising uh, something like uh, I don't know again a real estate on food oh no no it's it's for everybody it's just how to do it and i didn't know how to do it i learned from a famous guy i took his class and i was spending even though i've been doing digital marketing but facebook was really complicated so what happened is i was spending a thousand dollars a month for my own and uh, i was getting traffic but it wasn't converting so i then i started testing it and then spending a thousand dollars i was uh, after he taught me i was spending a hundred dollars and then i started to get better traffic so i was kind of like how did that happen he taught me how to do this and i've been kind of using his framework that i learned that's awesome i think maybe we need to do a uh, we, we i think we got another topic shirag shirag i think we got another topic for the club come on now facebook ads <laughs> i'm in yeah yeah <laughs> rock you want to introduce yourself hey good to see you hey man i just have it has it going you okay yeah great to see you if you want to introduce yourself to the group please yeah i'm sure so i'm actually a publishing consultant here at mission matters and i think i'm actually the first one to join the team but it's been going okay so far actually so what i do essentially is i help business executives just like yourselves to become published authors to give you that 
Awesome. Thank you, Rock. And yeah, for everybody listening. So yeah, Rock was our first publishing consultant we brought on and him and Chirag are working closely as we just started growing and Chirag couldn't handle it himself. He had to bring on his ace and that's where Rock came up and we're really excited to have him on board. And he's just been, I mean, he's been working with a lot of our newer authors, bringing them on board. So just wish you much more continued success here, Rock. It's been, it's been a lot of fun having you here. Same here, man. Same here. And it's funny because I was speaking to Sharag about podcasting as well today. So, so <laughs> literally, you know, talking about podcasting. So it's interesting. That's awesome. Well, before we stop the recording, anybody have any last minute tips or tricks or anything they want to get out of their mind for podcasting? All right. I think we call it then. Sounds like it's quiet to me, Shirag. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to our club. We're going to have, uh, if you're if you're on our newsletter, so um, if you're not on our newsletter and you're listening to this, go to missionmatters.com and sign up for the newsletter every Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have a, a different topic that we cover today was becoming a podcasting pro. Shirag does all of the content curation and he chooses all the topics. So if you have a topic that you want us to explore, or, or just to, or to host even. So for example, Martin, we want you to host this one for, for talking about the benefits of being a board member or creating a board for your business. I think we could hit both angles on that one. And you're definitely the, the subject matter expert there, but everybody just shoot Shirag an email if you have a topic you want us to cover. So Shirag at missionmatters.com. Notice I give his email and not mine. So, so thank <laughs> under the bus, Shirag. So thanks, Shirag, for putting this together for us as always. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing too, is that we've officially launched our Mission Matters Club. In fact, everyone here should have received an invite to join the club. We're going to be, the beauty of the clubs is uh, every single time a group member joins, we pretty much get notified. And what's going to start happening very soon here is uh, we want our authors to curate their own, their own rooms and uh, we want to support you guys. So we want to continue to build upon the community and you know really do something much more than you know just ourselves you know we want you guys to take the lead as well because you guys have a lot of expertise in many different areas in business from creating boards running media brands and being in the healthcare industry or being involved in the veteran space to there's just so many different topics that we can cover here and so join the board you guys all should have received an invite and if not let me know so i can send it your way awesome thanks rock Hey, thanks. Thanks for Absolutely. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Bye, 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 guys. Bye, everyone.